when you build your application, your app settings.json is going to get copied to the output as long as you've got the property set to copy, just like anything else in your solution, right? Copy to output directory, copy of newer. That's the default, and that's what you want. That is fine. Now, for app settings.stage.json, you could have things that override fields that are in app settings.json. So, for instance, if you had my custom settings and you have a few settings within this block and you want to override those then you would put my custom settings with the ones that you want to override in your app settings.stage.json then you will go ahead and set an environment variable you're going to set an environment variable for ASP.NET Core telling it exactly what environment you're going to use and then it knows which file to overwrite when it's loading the JSON files when you're running the application. So you build the app, it loads app settings.json, then it loads the app settings.stage.json or app settings.bob.json, depending on your environment variable, to tell it which settings to override. So this is all very, very simple, right? And then once you see it in action, you'll never forget it. So let's go ahead and walk through it together. So go ahead and right click on your project, not the solution, the project, go to properties. Great. Now we're looking for environment variables. So let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. And you'll see a little blue icon. Open Debug Launch Profiles UI. And here, I've got an ASP.NET Core environment variable. You don't want to put it twice. Just put the one that you're going to run, because it's only going to load one of those files, right? So if you want to run it as stage, just type stage there. And this is kind of interesting. Notice there's a, you can set different ones here, depending on different launch profiles, too. We're going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to save all. And if you go now to properties, look at launch settings.json, you'll see that on that HTTPS launch profile, it now shows stage. That is the environment variable. I can come back in here and go to properties go back to launch profiles and change it to Bob and close this and save my files and go back to launch settings.json and now the environment variable for ASP.NET Core environment is now Bob. So I can go in here and I can add a new one, add new item and I don't think it has one for app settings. So you might just type JSON in there. Oh, never mind. I'm lying. It has one there. So we will bring in and we'll call it app settings dot bob dot JSON. And let's come back to our parent here and under we made one called my custom settings, right? So within my custom settings, let's just create my setting one and my setting two. Keep things simple. And in app settings, this will be our default XYZ. Uh, how about we say default first setting and let's do two more of these and you'll explain why I'm doing two more in a moment you'll understand very soon so we'll do two and three and one all right why don't we uh, override one with Bob two with 
development and we'll leave three as is so that you can see how it's working. And and don't stop watching yet because we're also going to bring these values into C sharp. So I'm gonna show you how to do that if you haven't already seen that and I do it in I've done it in a couple other videos, but uh, if you don't want to change the channel, you can see it here. So in Bob, we're just going to override the first one. In development, we are going to override the second one. Oh, didn't paste there. Copy. there. In fact, not perfect. So we know it's set to Bob right now. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to come out to your program CS and we're going to bring, we're going to dependency inject a tiny little class in here. But we first got to create that class. So I'm just going to make a models folder. I'm going to call this folder, uh, it's, it's really a you know, POCO models, but I'm going to call it options. It's just kind of nice syntax for this kind of stuff. And in there, I'm going to create a class and it's going to have the name custom settings. And if you don't know what POCO means, it's just plain old C sharp object. There's nothing fancy to it. So we'll come in here to Bob again just to grab something. Setting one. Type prop, tab tab, and we're going to make this string, and we'll have this setting one, and we'll do two and three in here. Because this class will be used by all three of them. And if you don't want, don't like that warning, you can just initialize it. Really, no big deal there. Looking good. Now let's go back to program CS. Just one line you got to add in here for each one of your options classes, and it's it's the same thing every time. So you can literally use this in all your applications. Make it a little bigger. So basically, you know, if you're well, first of all, if you find yourself, and I'll walk you through the line I just added, but if you find yourself typing the same thing over and over as a programmer, you should probably be thinking to yourself, um, I can simplify that, right? So let's just call this var services equal to builder dot services and now we can do services dot add controller services dot configure and same thing over here uh, and I will explain this but so we're doing services dot configure here's the name of your class that you just built your simple poco model that had uh, either a property either a string an int or whatever string or an int or whatever type for each one of your settings in your app settings.json and here we're saying for each item in there we will bind that item against the configuration section of and then this should match exactly what you have in your json file now to me personally it makes more sense to have that section and to have the class name be the same word uh, why confuse people unnecessarily? But that's why it's in here twice. It, it has to understand both those things. So continuing on with the simplification real quickly. Um, so you can also builder.configuration. You're probably in a realistic application. You're going to do a lot more things with configuration. So just like you did services, you can also do config. You can do builder.configuration here. And then this would be a simplified down to just config. See how much easier to read that is? And then some people even bring this down a line and just tab it over. And that's it. So now we can bring it into our controller with injection. So if I go to controllers, the weather forecast controller, you know, the default one that comes with it that we all love. And now right in here, I can do private, read only, my custom settings.cs. Now let's just call it settings. 
You're going to want to put an underscore because just like how it is with logger, you know, that's the one that's available throughout the class. It's a little different for these I options, which you've seen probably in my other videos, but for these options, you use the I options, not IS options, I options, even if Visual Studio tells you otherwise. And inside these sideways carrots, you're going to type my custom settings. And here you can do settings. If it gives you any trouble, control dot, and you can bring in using Microsoft.extensions.options. You're probably going to have to do that. Now, down here, when I said it was a little different than the other injection, I just meant that you have to do dot value. So if you want, you can say settings equal to settings from your parameters dot value. And now you'll be able to use settings without having to type value every time. Come down here, uh, and we're going to put a breakpoint here. But really what we're going to do is we're going to be looking inside of settings at the different properties there. You could do a console.log if you want. Or I like to use debug.log. I know it's going to go into the debug section. Debug dot right line, not log. And let's do settings and we'll do each one of them. And we'll put a breakpoint here, and then all we have to do is just look at them. Alright. So right now our environment variable is set to uh, Bob, right? So if I run it and go to output. And let's go to, I'll let it wait till it allows me. There. You go to output and go to debug. We did debug dot right line, right? So default first setting one, two, three. Good. Now, if you go over to my settings, app settings Bob, we're going to call this the Bob overwrite. Bob overwrote this and run it. Should show up. And there it is. Bob overwrote this. Now, let's go to App Settings Development and we'll make the second string. Dev overwrote this. And I'm going to run it and we should not see Dev overwrote this because I have not set our environment variable to be developed. Indeed, it's still Bob overwrote this on the first one, and second setting is still default. So now all I got to do is switch over to my launch settings.json, which is the shortcut, right? Now I don't have to go into uh, properties on the project, although you can. You can go in there and change it. That's where we set it initially, right? But I'm doing the exact same thing by changing it in here. One of the things I recently noticed at work is that the launch settings.json does not get included into source control. Another way to keep certain semi-protected data out of your Git repository. But don't get too far into that because you can always use secrets, user secrets, if it's something that's really needing to be protected. And uh, the video I put out just before this will go into moving app settings JSON items into user secrets. That's a perfect segue into that. All right. So let's go ahead and change Bob to development. And then I'm going to run it again. And we can full on expect the Bob overwrote this to be gone. Oh. oh, good lesson there. Make sure you save everything and rebuild everything before you run it. All right. So, Dev overwrote this, and the Bob overwrote this is gone. So it's a very, very simple topic, and I realize that, so I'm not, um, I realize this isn't going to help everybody, but I think it's a very, very, very useful tool. Um, so the combination of watching this video and the user secrets video ought to get you squared away with app settings, JSON environment variables, and loading uh, items from your options. So hope that helps. Have a great day. Bye.